Have you seen this TikTok filter? So many of my friends were messaging me when this went viral saying that it was actually making them feel depressed because they didn't look like this and they were showing me pictures of them with and without the filter. But from a makeup artist's point of view, I thought, well, I can make you look like that if you really want to. Just give me your face. But when I saw how many other people online were really upset too, I really wanted to help because I get so upset when I see people hurting. So I wanted to break down this filter, explain some of the key points, because as a makeup artist and someone with basic knowledge of cameras and lightings that I've been using for 10 years now, I can remove filters and separate it from reality in my head. So I hope that with this knowledge, I can help some people feel a little bit better because this is 80% achievable with the other 10% being unrealistic airbrushing, black point changes, the whites of the eyes being emphasized, and then 10% face changes, which I ignore completely. But all of these combined create the illusion of glamour. And I also wanna talk a little bit about why we perceive this as being glamorous, while also showing you how to create this eye look. But before all that, if you're new here to the Make a Chair channel and you enjoy tutorials like this, then I might suggest hitting the subscribe button below. It's totally free. And if you're already subscribed, then thank you and welcome back. Now let's get started. So I started by taking a picture of myself with the filter as a guide. Now do not use this filter over makeup. Bare faces only, please. The main thing I noticed is how much bolder and more defined my brows were. For me, it brought my eyebrows closer in the center, lowered them down, and created a high arch and a short tail. And I have a hot take on this particular brow shape. So while I apply some foundation and some eyeshadow primer, I just want to talk about this. Now, this is a hot take, so bear that in mind, but I feel like this close together high arch is considered glamorous for a number of different reasons, but one of them because of the red carpet. So one thing I noticed is that a lot of really glam celebrities like Megan Fox or the Kardashians, they tend to have this close brow with the high arch. It's kind of that smize look. And I feel like this actually comes from the fact that they're on the red carpet and a lot of lights are flashing in their eyes. So they tighten and control the muscles around their eyes while also trying to keep their eyes open. And this creates that tighter look with a higher arch, the smize appearance on the red carpet that we see a lot of people doing. And because of this, I feel like we've associated really close together high arches with the appearance of glam in the same way that a tilted head down down, peering upwards is considered youthful. For example, Audrey Hepburn would do this. It's considered quite graceful, quite youthful, but it doesn't necessarily make you look younger. It creates the illusion of youth because it's connected to height. When you're younger, you tend to be smaller and you're looking up at people. So it's connected to youth and innocence. In the same way, like fox eyes and doe eyes, they create two different personalities simply with makeup placement. So that's just my hot take on this brow shape, but let's get back to the makeup. So I'm gonna start off with some brow gel and I'm just going to brush my eyebrows up and out just to create that lifted appearance to begin with. And I'm gonna be using a brow pencil, brow shadows. So I need an eyebrow brush and I had to show you this. So this is a drawer for your makeup brushes. This is by Blank Canvas Cosmetics. I'm not sponsored, but I am affiliated with them. So I have a discount code below if you wanna check it out. But the top drawer has all of the face brushes that you might possibly need. And then the bottom drawer has all of the eye brushes that you could ever need. And I'm going to be using the double-ended brow and spoolie brush to apply my brow products. So first of all, I need to bring my brows slightly closer together. So you're gonna add a line right here, basically using the dimple of the nose and a little bit closer, just to bring the brows closer together. And that's our mark number one. For our second mark, we're gonna create an arch. And this is gonna be a heavily defined, very high arch. So we're using the edge of the nose through the pupil to create the little arch. Now following that same line that went up towards the arch, I'm also gonna draw a line from the new beginning of my brow upwards. And this is a parallel line working in the same direction. And this is again going to create a lifted appearance. So we have our new beginning and we have our arch. And I'm using a pencil just to add a little bit more definition. And then I can go in with my brush and kind of blend this out. And I'm avoiding this area here, this little mini triangle, because we wanna do that last. So I want the front section to be a bit lighter the middle section to be a bit darker, and then it's darker all the way to the edge of the brow. And I used about three or four different shades to create this, and I kept using my spoolie to brush it through just so you can still see the hairs. This is just going to prevent them from looking too drawn on. But as you can see, we have a new start point. We're heading up towards the arch, and then we have a shorter tail. 
So in order to create these brows, I had to use like two to three different shades, blending it in. And these brows are really heavily defined, bold, they're strong, but in real life, they're way too intense. In real life, they look really incredibly heavy and not very flattering, but on camera, they look great. So that's one thing this filter does is it creates the illusion of what we see in the mirror, but just shows us what it would look like on camera because cameras take about 50% of our makeup away as it is. Now we're not gonna stop just there. We're going to define the brows even more by applying a very light shade just underneath the arch. This is once again gonna push the arch upwards. And I'm gonna take a concealer that's about one shade lighter than my own skin tone, maybe even more so. And we're just going to apply this right under this arch area pushing the brows kind of upwards in this imaginary illusion because when it's lighter under here, the darkness looks higher. I'm also going to apply this on the inner part of my eye. So it's kind of going on the inside of my nose area rather than the inside of my eye. This is something that I feel like the filter did for me. It brightened this entire area right by the nose. I think because the brows are coming in a little bit further, it creates more of an illusion of closer eyes and then this brighter area beneath it. So now we have this brightness underneath the brows and this brightness on this inner corner, and it just creates the illusion of this open eye bright appearance. Moving on, we're gonna define the eyes a little bit more. And I noticed that this was kept really sharp on the outer edge. If you wanna find this line, you just wanna line up your brush with the edge of your nose, eye and brow, and always be blending in from this point. Now I realized that this filter actually kept it really far in. There wasn't any blown out, pulled out appearance. It was really sharp on the outer edge and then blended all the way in towards the nose. So grab your favorite blending brush. And I'm gonna be using this shade called Sculpt, which is actually a bronzer. And when I tell you that this is the best bronzer I've ever used, I'm not even kidding. I can't believe it. I always think bronzers are just bronzers, not this one. This one is silky smooth, doesn't act like a bronzer, but it is a bronzer and you can use this to sculpt your eyes and your face. I'm basically going to take this product and I'm gonna start just on the outer edge and blend it all the way across the center point in towards the nose. And you always want to make sure that you are not getting anything on that white area underneath the brows, leave that as it is. You're then gonna also bring this down onto the lid, keeping that blend nice and smooth as we work towards the nose. And then you should start to end up with something like this, but bear in mind, you wanna keep that blend going because it needs to be soft and blurry and blended. We can then take a slightly darker shade and I'm using the same brush again. And you just wanna pick something that's about three to four shades darker than your skin tone. I'm gonna to start this on the outer edge, again, keeping it really sharp on the outer edge. And then you're slightly kissing the crease. A little trick is to bring your hand a little bit higher as you're doing this. It prevents you from blending the shadow up too high. It keeps it a little bit straighter because we do want to slightly kiss the crease, but we don't want to go up too high. And I'm then going to grab a blending brush. This is a very important step. Grab a clean blending brush and very softly start to blend this out because this filter is all about this kind of smudgy, doesn't know where it stops and ends sort of a look. Everything has to be very blended and blurred. So a clean blending brush will do that for you. Now is keeping an eye, pun intended, on what the filter looked like on the eye with no makeup and comparing what I was seeing in the mirror with the one that did have makeup on. That's a very important step as I was going along. And I noticed that I needed more blending and more blur. So I just took that clean blending brush, holding it really far down on the handle and just kept blending. I also noticed that there was a little bit of like a shimmery look on the lid, not too shimmery, but had more of a shine. So I'm just gonna use my face highlighter that matches my skin tone and just apply this in the center of the lid. And you can just use whatever highlight you use on your face because we want everything to blend perfectly together. And then gonna use the original brush that we applied the shadows with and just very softly pat over the top of the shimmer just to kind of blur and blend it out. This will just disperse it across the lid. One thing about this filter is it created this kind of shadowing, kind of blurry darkness at the lash line. It didn't have liquid liner. It was more of like a shadow, an effortless shadow. So pushing a little bit of black in between the lashes and onto the lash line will create the same illusion. However, this filter had like the black point settings turned up really high so that the black points looked really, really dark. And then the whites of the eye looked really, really white. That is completely unattainable 
but you can kind of create the illusion of it by smudging a little bit of black in between the lashes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and apply some lashes because the lashes were really, really dark and even the darkest mascara wouldn't be able to achieve that. But I do love these falsies, they're my favorite. So I'm going to apply them anyway, even though the lashes on the actual filter are very subtle and these are a little bit heavier, but still. Especially one thing that Davey pointed out is that he did say, my lashes just looked a lot thicker on the side that didn't have the filter compared to the side that did, but I wasn't gonna not wear my lashes. Side is you, and that side's the filter? Yeah. Your so eyelashes look thicker on this side. This doesn't put on as many lashes. Mm, very is good. It, is it pretty close? Yeah. I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. He's incredibly supportive saying that he couldn't tell the difference between the filter and me, but I think that's just what happens when people see us in real life. I also applied a nude liner on the waterline because my eyes looked a lot brighter and more lifted. I focused this mostly just in the center to create the illusion of like a rounder eye shape. Try to avoid using white because it'll actually contrast with your eyes a bit more. So what you wanna do is just match your skin tone. I then took a little bit of brown on the brow brush and I'm just gonna focus this on the center point. So looking straight on in the mirror, right in the center point right here, I'm just going to apply a little bit of that brown, bring it down a little bit lower, but then keeping it really tight as I go up towards the edge of the eye and up towards the inner part of the eye. And then I match the same with mascara, focusing mostly just on that center point, bringing the lashes down a little bit further so they're a little bit longer, and then keeping them just a little bit higher on the inner and outer edge. And then there you go, that is the finished look. A lifted brow, a very neutral eye with just like the little emphasis here and there. I feel like it got it pretty close to how the filter changed my eyes. If you would like me to do the entire face, then definitely let me know. It did kind of change the face a little bit more, which I'm not a big fan of, but I feel like the eyes were pretty close to how everybody's eye looked, except the brow was maybe a little bit more defined. So I hope that this helped you guys create this look for yourself. I just wanna talk about this filter for a quick second. Cameras take about 50% of makeup away from an image, or even just like our natural appearance, it takes about 50% away. I can look really gray and old and tired on my camera compared to what I'm seeing in real life and compared to what other people are seeing me as. Now you can use fancy lighting and a fancy camera, but even then it can be really hard to capture what somebody really truly looks like. I've seen so many people that in real life are stunning and striking and just fill up a room with their beauty, but on camera, it just doesn't exactly show them for who they are. And then you can have other people that shine on camera. You are so much more than this filter. This filter does not make you look good or better. I basically just want you to know that you're beautiful how you are. And as always, my friends, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I will see you guys in a video really soon. Also, here's me <laughs> explaining to Davey how this filter worked because I was trying to show him that on one side I had no makeup and on the other side he could look at me and see if it compared to the filter. So here's a little behind the scenes. Mm. See on there? Yeah. On there. That's like on there, look. Yeah. You gotta look at this in real life, mm -hmm. but that side on the camera. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. You should actually put up a photo and be like, which one is which? I'm alright at this. You're really good at it. <laughs>